guys want to react to some stuff? A lot of people have asked me to react to Z Frank. And I have not yet done it because Z Frank posted a video specifically about fish. It was actually a couple weeks ago, it was before I went on the cruise, but I marked it down to look at it and then I never got to it. Live, laugh, love Z Frank. Yeah, a lot of you guys have asked me to react to Z Frank before because he makes a lot of very cool, funny videos about animals and wildlife. Uh, but he hasn't posted something that I felt comfortable reacting. I only really like to react to things that I feel like I can have input. And so, you know, things about like sea cucumbers and all that stuff, I didn't really feel like I had a ton of input. But true facts, Hoggers. fish that suck, I think this might be uh, something that I might have some input to. So I feel morally okay reacting to the Z Frank video. So let's do it. Welcome to the True Facts Animal Awards, celebrating animals with awards. There's this lab called the Wainwright Lab at UC Davis. Anyway, they have a bunch of videos of a variety of fishes eating. Let's take this one for example. We'll stop it here and I want you to imagine what will happen next. Now you might- This is that part where uh, every Megalodon video, or sorry, every scary fish video is like, the fish creates a vacuum which sucks all of the area around it into its mouth. It's like, yeah, every single fish does that. Not every single, but most fish have a protrusible jaw that will then create sort of like a suction motion so that things go into their mouth. Because um, if you think about it, like what's a good comparison? Okay, all right. So there's a bunch of, you're in a room and there's a bunch of Cheez-Its hanging from the ceiling on strings, okay? Now, what's going to be more efficient? You go up to a Cheez-It and go, and it goes into your mouth, or you run through the Cheez-Its at full speed with your mouth open and hope for the best. <laughs> because that would be what it would be like, ram feeding. If you didn't have the ability to suck things in, you would just be running through a room of hanging Cheez-Its with your mouth open and hoping you catch them. You know, it's just not very efficient. Might imagine it like how a tuna do. Pretty straightforward, the tuna opens its mouth and then sort of swims into what it's eating. Yeah, Very so like tuna that. are one of the fastest fish in the world, so of course they can ram feed like that because they're just faster than everything else. But most fish can't do that. Imagine something closer to this moray eel. Same sort of thing, the jaw opens up, but in this case it bites down. But look at this one. Instead of the jaw opening on a simple hinge, this looks more like someone setting up one of those pop-up tents on the beach. And the more you look at these in slow motion, the weirder it gets. And this is because most fish suck. They also use suction to feed. Now, fish skulls are made out of an elephant shitload of parts. <laughs> these parts <can laughs> That's lose. so true. You guys remember my ichthyology? I'm sorry, I'm pausing a lot. You guys remember my ichthyology lesson? Um, I got to, I like went over the internal anatomy of fish. So the internal anatomy ichthyology lesson. We talked about, you know various organs and it's like there's not that many organs to go through and blood and sort of how that works and all that and then we get to bones and it's like yeah the caudal the back is pretty easy the spine's pretty easy you got a few rib cages and then there's a skull and it was like a 25 part diagram with colors and like puzzle pieces and shit fish skulls are absurd is rotate and move to expand the volume inside the head. This expansion creates lower pressure and suction. And listen, these fish can do a good bit of sucking. Here's one where they tied the food to something that measures force. And you can watch the fish slowly get more and more pissed off. <laughs> now it can get even more complicated because some of these fish have a sort of double jointed lower jaw. Like this one here. <laughs> some fish create lower pressure by elongating their jaws. And in that category, there's none better than the sling jaw wrasse. It can extend its jaw an additional 65% of its head length. Now, most of these fish eat their prey whole. They need to get it into their esophagus and tum-tums before it swims back out. For that, they have a friggin' second set of jaws. These pharyngeal jaws seem to help get the- Pharyngeal jaws. Man, that's something we haven't talked about in a while. When was, whenever we watched a video on moray eels and they talked about how they have like an alien second jaw, I would talk about how cool pharyngeal jaws are. It's terrifying. It's like there's a fish inside the fish. If you look close, <laughs> you can see it in action, pulling the food back and towards the throat. Here's another <laughs> shot of it. It just does look like there's a tinier fish inside the fish that's eating the food. <laughs> it's like a hand comes out. Now, while the sling jaw rasp... Didn't know other fish had that, thought it was mostly just eels. Now, pharyngeal jaws are not that uncommon. Eels just have crazy pharyngeal, uh, pharyngeal jaws. And then there's a lot of fish that have pharyngeal molars, which are just like a plate of molar teeth. 
So imagine like your molar teeth, like the flat teeth, they basically have a plate, like a hand-sized plate in their throat that's just covered in molars, and they use that to crush stuff with their throat. Crazy. The tube lip wrasse is a bit more understated. Look at it giving that coral little kisses. But the thing about coral is that they are cynodarians, like jellyfish, and they're covered in tiny little stinging cells. So to be able to give a coral a kiss requires some special lips. On the left are the lips of a typical non-coral feeding wrasse. On the right are the very puckered and kissable lips God, of the tube lip wrasse. I These really hate when they zoom too far in on animals. There's an amount of zooming where it's kind of gross. <laughs> Plecos! Bro, plecos are the fish that got me into fish. The first fish I ever cared about, I saw a pleco on the glass at a fish store and I wanted it. So I like asked my dad if I could have it as a pet. And he said that I'd do a bunch of chores. And I like worked for months doing chores to get a pleco as a pet. And I had the terrible time. All of this spiraled into my knowledge of fish. Prior to that, I didn't really have much interest. In so you can thank plecos for Avian J. Some use their mouths, seems like the obvious choice. Others, like the mudskipper or leaping blenny, have fused Mud pectoral skipper. fins, which they can use like a little suction cup. The top of the remora's head looks a bit like evolution stepped on it with a medium tread hiking boot. But with it, they can attach themselves to whatever the hell they want to. If you look closer at the lamellae, you can see that they're covered by thousands of these little blunt spikes. They almost look like the teeth of a comb. At rest, they all sort of lie flat against the fish but they can be rotated so they stick out at an angle from the remora's back. Watch as this remora attaches to the glass. You can see those thousands of spikes angling and making contact with the surface. All of this keeps the remora from sliding as oncoming water Sick. pushes it back. Wait, is all suction? No, some suction is due to pressure, right? I'm just realizing that that means that they don't actually suck. They kind of just stab you with a million tiny needles and that allows them to hold on. So they really don't do suction, they just kind of stab you, but in a harmless way. Now in order to stay on the surface of the host fish, they need some help from that fleshy lip. When the Ramona attaches, it pushes up against the host Velcro. and it spills water from underneath that disc. Yeah, it's like Velcro, except your skin isn't really made for Velcro to fit on it, but they find a way. Then those lamellae rotate and the spikes push on the surface, and all of this creates lower pressure and wow. suction. But the seal has to remain tight. Now, overall, most of these Remora host relationships are win-win. The Remoras take care of some parasites, and in return, they might get a fish at feeding time, they get their travel for free, and the host offers some protection against the Remora's predators. There's a big asterisk on that statement. We'll get back to that in a second. But I assume there are lots of predators that decide to predate on Remoras instead. I never really knew anything about Remoras. I, like, could identify one on site. I, I assume there's multiple species. I never really got to learn anything. It's actually very interesting. Sometimes the host is just not that into it. Might want some alone time. And sometimes those remoras attach themselves in awkward places. Like this one right here, it's near the genital slit. And I think we can all agree you don't want a fish on your genital slit. So there's actually a paper on the physics of how dolphins spin to get remoras off. <laughs> not like get them off, but like remove them from their body. If you want protection from predators, you have to choose the right host. I mean, this one may look like an idiot, but at least that host has poison in it. I mean, the whale shark, you might be thinking, well, at least it's big. But if your predator's a f***ing bird, they're not going to do s*** for you. <laughs> I mean, you're basically on a whale-shaped plate. But look how hard that cormorant has to work. And that is why the Remora wins, the fish that sucks the most. <laughs> oh, finally, we have... Okay, that's a crazy title. So, I did not know that cormorants would dive onto whales and peel the Remoras off. That's and sick. The this right here is an Egyptian vulture. It's quite a striking bird, isn't it? What they do is they find a mud puddle and get all intimate with it. Look at that, right up in there. And this mud stains their front feathers red. It's thought that what they're doing is basically changing their looks by applying a cosmetic. Maybe as a status symbol or something to do with mating. And these birds aren't alone. The Japanese crested ibis does something similar. In this case, it's not a mud bath. They actually secrete a tar-like substance from their face parts. And then they smear it all over the rest of themselves. Don't a lot of birds do that? Aren't like all, not all birds, but many birds waterproof because they have like a, a mucus oil type thing that comes out. I think it's the tip of their wings or something. No, that's cedar wax wings have the wax on them. I think a lot of birds have like something that they secrete that then they constantly, that's why they're constantly preening themselves to keep themselves waterproof. You know, you make your own cosmetics, like using what comes Otherwise they would just get wet whenever it rained and not be able to fly. Out your pimples for moisturizer. 
Thank you, Z Frank. That is a wonderful video. You should watch Z Frank in general. He has, I think, thousands. Oh, never mind. 238 videos just like that. They're very entertaining to watch. Um, but he finally did one on fish. So I thought that that would. Types of freshwater mussels that catch fish. Okay, well, that's maybe another one we can watch in the future because that one sounds good too. Whoa!